we are very blessed here at the Goldmark Gallery in that quite often we get to see and handle the most amazing bits of art which often doesn't hit the website because we've got customers ready and waiting for these things. And one of these, which is just going out today, I'm, I'm, let me show you very quickly. It's um, a first edition of Goya's Disasters of War. We have this uh, box made for it. And here it is. Eighteen sixty three, the first edition of this extraordinary book. I was in Vienna on one occasion and I went into one of the wonderful galleries which they've got there and there was, the, the whole place was in darkness and there were a series of etchings on the wall individually lit and one walked around and it was the disasters and it just took my breath away. So to actually handle the first edition is just wonderful. I just wanted to share it with you. We've been working with Ken Matsuzaki, who works out of Mashiko in Japan, perhaps the leading light in Mashiko, for 13, 14 years now. I think our first exhibition was in about 2007, and we've shown him on half a dozen occasions since then. My wife Fiona and I were in Japan three or four years ago visiting and there was one day when we stayed in a particularly posh hotel and the foyer was done out with Ken Matsuzaki dishes of this sort so I couldn't resist the temptation that we should have examples of them in the gallery in Uppingham and this here's a absolutely magnificent one. I promised last week that we would take a look at some of these beautiful nuka pots in Jim Malone's uh, impromptu 101 prize pots exhibition which has been going on successfully the last uh, couple of weeks. Um, so here they are, some of these choice pots arranged out on this, this shelf here. Nuka glaze, like Temoku which we looked at recently, is a, a glaze that's long established within pottery tradition. It's a Japanese glaze and it was traditionally made uh, using rice husks, a waste product from, from milling rice, the sort of the casings that the rice kernels are kept in. Essentially it's an ash glaze, but the special thing about these rice husks is that when they were burned down in quite a, quite a dirty burn, quite a smoky burn, it's not a, not a clean burn to, to its ash, these rice husks are very high in silica. Silica is one of the many materials, one of the many uh, properties of glaze making which, which helps actually form the glaze, the glassy surface of a glaze in pottery. Nuka is so dense with it, so thick with silica, that when it's particularly thickly applied, some of that silica fails to melt during the, during the firing. And instead, it's suspended within the glaze surface on these pots. That's what gives it this beautiful, thick, opaque, milky sort of blue-white colour. Now you'll see from a number of these different pots here that Nuka is a hugely versatile glaze. It can be combined with slips, with other glazes, it can be poured, it can be used as shoulder decoration. It's, it's a really beautiful glaze that really makes the most of, of particular firing conditions, especially when you've got wood fuel there. 
Jim has formulated a Nuka glaze as well that um, has a, a kind of olive quality to it. It's a Nuka glaze that has a, an iron-bearing rock added to the formula. So it, it, it sort of gives a, a slightly different colour quality to the, to the Nuka glaze and it really marries well with some of the other ash glazes and things within his repertoire. What you can see from this variety of pots that I've got here with me is just that beautiful, thick, rich quality of Nuka. And I think I mentioned this when we, we did our walkthrough of this exhibition. I just love the idea that Nuka, like every other aspect of pottery, is um, kind of represents a, a moment frozen in time. The idea that the, the beautiful depth of this glaze, that sort of thick, um, very generous quality to it, that silky quality to it, is the result of things suspended within the surface. And it's a lovely sort of encapsulation of what pottery is about, about these little frozen stories that sort of tell their past, they tell the materials that are, that are in them, they tell the, the story of their making. I think it's a really kind of poetic side to pottery. You'll see across these pots there's a number of different decorative things that we've got going on here. So we've got here a, a nuka pot with tomoku uh, pouring. I mentioned when we did our little uh, short film on Temuku, Temuku and Nuka are beautiful companions, the sort of the dark and the light coming together and they really um, work beautifully together as um, different applied glazes so um, this is a particularly lovely bottle. Something that you see a lot in, um, in Hamada's work, Nuka bottles with Temuku decoration on the front of them. This is a particularly lovely vase from Jim Malone here. You'll also see that Nuka really combines really well with ash glazes, the sort of runny ash glazes that are in Jim Malone's repertoire. Uh, we've got three, I think, vases here that have got this, this lovely sort of soft matte granite glaze here. On top of that, with this uh, incise decoration, we've got an ash glaze. That's this lovely olive colour that you can see here. This glassy pour across this surface here. And on top of that, we've got Nuka again. So we've got three very different glaze qualities going on. And it really sort of lends itself to the movement of that pot. It gives this beautiful feeling of sort of downward motion, taking us through the form. It almost sort of uh, carries your eye from this top uh, lip, this sort of lustrous Nuka surface here, through down to this much drier glaze surface here. You also see in a, a number of these pots, these nuka pores, and depending on the slips used, depending on the glazes, the ash glazes used in combination with it, you can really make the most of the different colours that you can get in nuka. There's a real variety of, of, um, of sort of faint colouring that you get in the glaze. That's especially evident in this beautiful, beautiful bowl here. These five nuka pores around the edge here, combining with this ash glaze in the middle, have pooled into the bottom of this bowl. There's this wonderful swirl of blue-white glassy decoration going on here. It's got lovely movement to it, real kind of fluidity, real freshness. That would be a lovely fruit bowl, I think. We contrast oranges and lemons really nicely. You can see also from some of these pots that um, decoration that's in the clay, things like some of these combed marks, these incised marks, and some of these vases and, and pots up here, or these fluted marks here. I think this might have an iron slip underneath it. They show off Nuka as a, as a glaze on its own, a glaze that really works as a sort of a, 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 a body glaze, and that showing off the, the qualities of the clay underneath it is a, is a really lovely effect, bringing out these dark lines, these dark surfaces from underneath the nuka. For me, it's that slightly blue tinge that you get to a nuka glaze, which is, it's not special to it as, a, as an ash glaze, but it's, it's very, very much very characteristic of its, of its quality. And it's a really lovely quality in that, in that blue as well. That's really, to me, one of my favorite things about this glaze. You can see it, especially um, when you have little bits of decoration that just catch the nuka at work. So you'll see on this, this is a lovely vase with this band here that's been used to, to catch some of this ash glaze that's on this pot. And you also see these little indented sort of corner marks here. 
they've actually, some of them, they've caught both the ash glaze and the nuke on top of it. And you can just about make out in the little pits of these pots, of these, of these little uh, indents, a little blue pool on top of this deep, dark olive. It's a really lovely colour combination. And it just sort of draws your eye to the slight blue feathering that you get around the edge of this glaze up here, around the shoulder of this pot. One of my very favourite pots in the exhibition, I think we showed it briefly during the walkthrough, is one that shows just how much you can get out of a new key when it's used sparingly too. This is one of Jim's tall vases. It's a real testament to his throwing capabilities. It's got a lovely form to it, this lovely high shoulder up here. But what really makes this vase, I think, alongside these combed marks, which have caught all this ash glaze on top, is the colour that's coming in with this nuka here. This thick, opaque colour that's catching to this sort of blue, this sort of iridescent blue at the edges. I hope you've enjoyed seeing some of these nuka pots today. It was really um, an excuse for me to get at them out and, uh, and enjoy them a bit more uh, in detail. Nuka is one of those glazes that really um, accentuates how much there is to enjoy in the, at the surface quality of, of pottery and how the wonderful form that first draws you to Jim's pots, the sort of the confidence in them, the kind of majesty of these very sculptural pots brings you in close and it's when you start handling them that you can start to enjoy the real complexities, the real nuances in some of these different glazes that he's using and the effects that have come from them during his firing. This has been a really interesting show to, to talk about, a really interesting show to, to dive into and, and get to know some of these glazes better. I hope you've enjoyed the videos that we've shown on it. If there's more you'd like to see, do please get in touch, let us know, and we'll see if we can, we can talk about some more. Hope you enjoy today.